Today, we are going to read a book by Seymour Simon. It is called Dolphins, all about their communication, cleverness, playfulness, and more. This is the second book in our text set by Seymour Simon. As I read, I want you all to look for some of the things you notice about Seymour Simon's writing and think about the new information that you are learning about dolphins. In a world where so many wild animals avoid and fear humans, dolphins charm us because they, are, they often seem unafraid of people. Clever, curious, and mischievous, dolphins love to play and have fun. A dolphin nicknamed Simo lived in the waters off Salva, South Wales. Simo seemed to enjoy capsizing canoes and overturning the people in them. He would follow a diver underwater, suddenly appear from behind, and rise up to hit, hit him on the head, knocking off his snorkel and goggles. One bottlenose dolphin, nicknamed Percy, who lived in the coastal waters near Cornwall, England, played with the crab pots that people placed on the sea bottom. He seemed to delight in lifting boat anchors and moving the boats to different spots. There are countless stories of dolphins befriending people and even helping them to survive at sea. Sailors believe that dolphins brought them luck and that it was a bad omen to kill a dolphin. In the past, fisher folk would set dolphins free if they got entangled in their nets. Dolphins and porpoises are whales or cetaceans, which is the scientific name for whales. Dolphins and porpoises are smaller, tooth whales. Larger whales, such as the blue whale, have a comb-like strainer made of baleen or whale bone in their mouths instead of teeth. Blue whales are the largest animals on Earth, growing to more than 100 feet in length and weighing over 150 tons. Most dolphins and porpoises are smaller than 12 feet long. Names can be confusing. Some porpoises are called dolphins. Some dolphins are called porpoises, and a few dolphins are called whales. The largest dolphin is the orca, or killer whale. A male orca can grow to 30 feet in length, much bigger than other dolphins, but much smaller than baleen whales. All whales are mammals. That means that they are warm-blooded, have babies that are born alive and feed on milk, and have hair or fur on some parts of their body. Whales live in water but have lungs. When they come to the surface, they breathe air through an opening on top of their heads called a blowhole. When a whale surfaces, it spouts a blow of water vapor. Here is an example of a blowhole on top of the dolphin's head. What is the difference between a dolphin and a porpoise? Not that much. Dolphins and porpoises look and act very much alike. Both have streamlined bodies, tail flukes, and blowholes. Porpoises are usually smaller and rarely longer than 7 feet in length. Most dolphins are not longer than 10 feet. Perhaps the best way to tell a dolphin and porpoises apart is by their heads and bodies. Porpoises have smaller heads and, a, and lack a beak or snout. The top, or dorsal, fin on a porpoise is triangular, like the dorsal fin of a shark. The dorsal fin of a dolphin is rounded, like a wave. A porpoise's teeth are spade-shaped, while a dolphin's teeth are cone-shaped. Dolphins have lean, streamlined bodies. Porpoises often look chubby or chunky by comparison. Porpoises are rarely seen on the surface of the water. Dolphins often swim on or just below the surface, 
riding the bow, the bow waves of fishing boats. Dolphins also show less fear of humans than porpoises do. I want you to think about what you heard on this page and then answer. Do you think this is a photograph of a dolphin or of a, of a porpoise? And how can you tell? There are about 35 different species or kinds of dolphins and six kinds of porpoises. Most of these live in the salty oceans, but four dolphin species live in freshwater rivers. Five or six kinds of dolphins, including the orca and pilot whale, are usually called whales. Freshwater river dolphins live in only a few of the largest rivers of Asia and South America, such as the Ganges, the Indus, and the Amazon rivers. Dolphins and porpoises live in all of the oceans except for the very coldest polar waters. The common dolphin, the Atlantic spotted and the Atlantic striped dolphins, and the white beaked and the bottlenose dolphins are often seen in the North Atlantic Ocean. Pacific white-sided and bottlenose dolphins live in waters off Canada and Alaska. Spinner dolphins, rhizos dolphins, and rough-toothed dolphins are mostly found in warmer tropical waters. Now I want to take a thinking break. So all of the information on these pages is related to one idea that Seymour Simon wants us to understand. What do you think this idea is? And keep in mind that authors of nonfiction often organize their information about the topic so it's easier for us to understand and remember. Dolphins live and feed in large family groups where warm and cold currents meet, and the waters are rich in food and nutrients. Dolphins may travel hundreds of miles in search of a variety of fish, squid, and shrimp. Despite their sharp teeth, dolphins don't chew their food. They use their teeth for grabbing and holding prey. Dolphins usually swallow fish whole. Some dolphins feed at night, while others feed during the day. A group of bottlenose dolphins, called a pod, often works together to catch fish. In open waters, the dolphins encircle a school of fish and herd them into a small area. Then the dolphins take turns charging through the midst of the school to feed. Dolphins sometimes use their tail flukes to bat larger fish into the air, stunning them so they're easier to catch. Other times, dolphins herd schools of fish towards shore to trap them into shallow water where they can't get away. Dolphins and porpoises are different, use different sounds to communicate with each other. The sounds include whistles, clicks, barks, squawks, and rasps. To signal others in their pod, they also jump straight out of the water and fall back with a loud splash. Some people think that dolphin sounds are a form of language. Dolphins can produce a series of 2,000 high-pitched clicks per second that go through the water, hit an object, and bounce back to the sender. By listening to the echo and the time it took to return, a dolphin can accurately locate a fish as small as your little finger. This is called echolocation, or sonar. Dolphins scan objects with their sonar. They can also combine the sonar image with their vision so that they can identify objects. Dolphins use their sonar to find food or swim at night when there is no light to see their surroundings.
Dolphins and porpoises are social animals that live in groups of all sizes. Small groups are called pods. The size of a pod depends upon the kind of dolphin, the age and sex and other conditions. Pods range in size from two or three to a dozen or more. Several pods sometimes join into herds or schools and can number in the hundreds. Dolphins in a pod have strong bonds. They can even recognize each other after a long separation. Mother-calf bonds are long-lasting. A calf stays with its mother for three or more years. Young adult male pods are strong and long-lasting. The young males cooperate in hunting and survival. Dolphins establish dominance in a pod by biting, chasing, and smacking their tails on the water. They scratch each other with their teeth and leave tooth marks. Dolphins also use bubble clouds from their blowholes to show their place of power in the pod. Dolphin mothers give birth to a single calf just below the surface of the water. The baby dolphin nurses underwater from its mother, but has to come to the surface to breathe. At birth, a baby dolphin weighs 30 to 50 pounds and is 35 to 50 inches long. A calf will nurse for about a year and a half. Babies are toothless at birth, but start to grow teeth in a few weeks. When it is about four months old, a baby starts to eat fish, but continues to nurse as well. Dolphin mothers are very protective of their babies. A young dolphin can easily stray from the pod and get lost or attacked by sharks if it is not constantly watched. A mother often raises her calf with the help of other female dolphins in the pod called aunties. When the mother is resting, the aunties act as babysitters, swimming around the calf in protective circles. The close contact between the calf and other dolphins helps the youngster learn how to fish and swim and communicate with and live with others in the pod. The bottlenose dolphin may be the best known because it is often seen in marine parks and other large aquariums. The bottlenose is seen along the shores of the United States and lives in temperate and tropical waters around the world. This dolphin gets its name because of its short and stubby beak that resembles a bottle. Its top fin is high and curved and located near the middle of its back. Its flippers are medium length and pointed. Male bottle noses are usually larger than females and may reach 12 feet in length and weigh 1,400 pounds. Their color is usually light gray to slate gray on the upper parts of the body becoming lighter on the sides and pink-gray on the bottom. Bottle noses live in groups of 20 or less near the shore, but may live in offshore groups of several hundred. An adult bottle nose eats 15 to 30 pounds of food each day. At times, bottle noses feed near fishing boats. Orcas, which are also known as killer whales, are the largest dolphins in the world. An orca's back and sides are jet black and it is a gleaming white underbelly and a white oval spot above each eye. The coloring of an orca may remind you of a penguin. A male orca can grow to be 32 feet long, as large as a school bus, and weigh 8 to 9 tons, as much as 3 Asian elephants. Orcas live in all the oceans of the world. Orcas care for sick and injured members of, the pod, of their pod. Each orca pod makes some sounds in common with other pods and other sounds that are only made by their own pod. Orcas live and hunt in pods of several females, calves, juveniles, and one or more males. Sometimes they are called the wolves of the seas. Depending upon the area, Orcas feed on different kinds of food, including sea lions, elephant seals, harbor seals, smaller porpoises, penguins, 
small as well as larger whales and fish, including sharks. Orcas do not attack people in the wild. So let's take another thinking break. These last few pages told us about different kinds of dolphins and porpoises. What are the names of some of the new dolphins that we learned about? And what other information was new to you? The greatest threats to dolphins and porpoises are still pollution and careless commercial net fishing. Scientists think that increased levels of garbage and industrial waste washing into the sea help create a red tide. A red tide is the result of the rapid growth of tiny sea plankton that produce a kind of poison. Fish eat the poison and dolphins eat the fish and die. During a red tide, many dolphins may be killed or injured. In the Pacific Ocean, tuna swim with dolphins. More than 50 years ago, many thousands of dolphins were killed in tuna nets every year. Today, different kinds of tuna nets and careful fishing boats, boat captains have reduced the number of dolphins killed to a few thousand. And divers and sailors release any dolphins caught in the net. People are the greatest threat to dolphins, but people can also help dolphins the most. If people buy tuna that is labeled dolphin safe on the can, then commercial tuna fishermen will use safety nets that don't accidentally ensnare dolphins. The United States Congress passed the Marine Mammal Protection Act to protect whales, dolphins, and porpoises. Here are some things we can all do to help dolphins. Put beach litter into a trash container. If you are in a boat when you spot dolphins, ask the driver to slow down and avoid tur turning or reversing suddenly. Do not harass dolphins and don't pursue them if they leave. Help beach dolphins and porpoises by calling the local police, aquarium, or Department of Conservation. Write letters to government officials asking them to strengthen the protection of animals. So Seymour Simon ended this book by listing ways that we can all help dolphins. I want us to talk about why it might be important for an author to do this.